We've been talking a lot about single displacement reactions and the activity series of metals, and I kind of know what you're thinking. Okay, truthfully, some of you are th wondering how many marshmallows you can st stuff in your mouth and still talk properly, and the answer is not as many as you think. But some of you are maybe wondering how all of that fits in with everyday life. How does it fit with the world outside of the classroom? And we're going to talk about one of those aspects today with corrosion. Now you may be wondering what corrosion has to do with you and hopefully we're going to answer some of those questions today. But as a starting point, thinking about it from a chemical reaction point of view or a big picture point of view, corrosion is really just a metal going back to nature. If you think about how we get most of our metals when we refine those metals, we're not taking them simply taking the metal out of the rock, but we're taking the metal atoms out of a compound containing those metal ions. So we have to do some chemistry in that reaction, in that refining process, to take the ions in the compound and convert them back to atoms. And then when we have that uh, metal uh, in use, we now run the risk of that metal going back to its more natural, its preferred state. Think of the activity series where certain metals are more reactive than hydrogen in the water. So as it's exposed to water, it's going to convert back to the compound form or more the form that naturally occurred in as an ore. So why is corrosion important? Because for most of us in our everyday life, corrosion is really just a nuisance, a bit of an inconvenience. But in terms of the overall cost of corrosion, in terms of Canada's gross domestic product, it's about 2 point, per, two point yeah, represents 2.4% of our gross domestic product. To put that in perspective, we spend about 1.2% on the military and about 15% on healthcare. Now, we, without getting into the discussion of how expensive healthcare is, corrosion is a significant amount of cost to uh, Canada. And if you were to put that into how much money you could get, you know, how much worth that is to every Canadian, about $1,100 for every Canadian. That's what it's costing us. Now, if I don't know what you would do if you had $1,100, I would probably put it into the new motorcycle fund. Mm. Anyway, it's not just a Canadian problem, of course, it's a global problem, and this comes from a U.S. Air Force uh, document. But what I want to point out is they have this deputy director of a corrosion office. So they are focusing on that whole branch, looking into how do they uh, control and, and mitigate and deal with corrosion. And one of the options they had was, and if you think about this in terms of what it would cost to do this, it was worth it and to reduce the amount of corrosion that it would have cost to install all of these new uh, corrosion resistant parts. Now, uh, another piece from an aircraft is this fuel valve. And that fuel valve, and you only see the, the corrosion in a tiny little bit, but that corrosion was enough to uh, perhaps cause the crash of about six of these aircraft, at least at the time I found that article. But it's also something that happens to individuals, so not just airplanes or so on, but it does have a significant cost to individual lives. So this is from Ottawa from several years ago, where a balcony that was held up by steel uh, bars or something like that, steel connecting, uh, that balcony collapsed and there were six people on it. Now maybe that was a lot of people for that balcony, but it shouldn't have collapsed even with that number of people. And you can see that several people were uh, severely injured. And what ended up happening was um, they got looking into it and they found out that corrosion was behind the problem. Uh, in a separate incident in 2009 in Montreal was a cement slab or concrete slab fell off the side of a building and crashed through uh, up, up, or onto a patio restaurant and killed a woman. And the picture of where the slab had come from, and it weighed about seven to 800 pounds, and the, the, the metal pins, the steel pins that were holding that concrete slab in place, rusted through because uh, of water seepage and let go. Um, there was a light pole in San Francisco that I'm not gonna say anything more about that. You can read the headline, and it pretty much speaks for itself. In uh, can't, I've lost uh, where this one came from, but in this one it was a partial road collapse or a bridge collapse, uh, and then they identified corrosion as being the thing behind it. Uh, this one goes back several years. 
but there's a bridge that goes from West Virginia to uh, Ohio, and uh, one day during afternoon rush hour, uh, the bridge collapsed, and again, they found corrosion to be the source of the problem. Um, this was from uh, a few years ago as well. This was in Montreal, where there's a tunnel collapse. And again, they identified corrosion as being part of it. So the steel rebar that held the concrete together, that had corroded. Um, in Laval, which is also in Quebec, a similar thing, uh, corrosion of the steel rebar, which caused uh, the bridge to, to the overpass to collapse. Five people uh, died in that accident. Back uh, when I was younger, uh, I remember this being in the news. This was an airplane flight uh, coming back from Hawaii. And what happened was, well, you can see what happened. Uh, part of that fuselage uh, tore off. And what it came down to was um, metal fatigue, but it was also made worse by corrosion. Um, also, uh, not that long ago in Canada, up in Elliott Lake, which is a, a town in northern Ontario, there was a mall that was collapsed. And once they started looking into it in uh, much more detail, they found a lot of cracking which caused corrosion of the rebar, which caused weakening of the rebar, which was holding all the concrete together. Um, that's a picture from the inquiry, so you can see extensive corrosion on that thing. Now again, steel is quite strong. Rusty steel is not. Rust is not. Think about how rust turns into all these, this flaky material. Well, that has no strength. So as the iron in the steel turns into rust, uh, it loses most of its desirable properties in terms of uh, construction. This is from a biomedical implant. I've forgotten what it is, but you can see a little bit of rust forming on that. And if that's in a living organism, uh, that's really undesirable. Um, this is an artificial hip. And one of the things about artificial hips is in order for it to move well, then the surface of that has to stay uh, really, really clean. So any corrosion on that would cause some serious problems. But if you were to start sanding and polishing that thing, you would actually at the m atomic level start to weaken the surface of it. So they have to be very, very careful about those kinds of things. It's also cultural. So we have a lot of cultural things that are made of materials that will corrode, like the Eiffel Tower or Rodin's The Thinker. Um, and you can see that the results of years of corrosion. Every once in a while, they will go through a restoration process uh, for some of these art pieces that have started to corrode. It also has environmental impacts, whether this is a water pipe or a sewage pipe or an oil pipeline or a gas pipeline. And you can see where the pipelines, especially buried underground, water pipes in, in cities and such, they are in a fairly corrosive environment because they're constantly being wet. Now they can wrap that material, but you notice here right along the weld where the seam, uh, there is rust forming. And that would of course be eventually become a weak point. And if you were to look at that microscopically, even if you were to clean the surface rust off and it looked pretty good, but sometimes that pitting goes much, much deeper into the material. So A, that rust will come back. B, it's already compromised the material, even if it doesn't look like a whole lot of rust. This was a gas line uh, down in New Mexico where there was an underground gas line and it was leaking. Uh, so the gas was seeping out into the ground. Uh, there was uh, people camping and their, their campfire ignited the gas leak. And between uh, 12 people being killed, uh, the vehicles burning, and there were some other structures around. There was a, a bridge overpass nearby. It was also damaged. Significant amount of structural damage to that and the, the eventual cost, not only in, in 12 lives, but also in repairs, was about a million dollars. Okay, so preventing corrosion becomes something that is really, really important. And there's a variety of, of ways of doing that. And that's going to become the next thing we talk about. Um, hopefully you understand the importance of corrosion and why it's important to monitor corrosion and then have ways to deal with that. And that's gonna be kind of the thing that we deal with uh, next.